In part 8.1, we looked at the first category of optimization profile that would cause concern if I saw it in my results. We now move on to the second category that's also a potential problem. Now again, we have our preferred type of profile at the top and underneath a far less desirable profile. But note how this does actually pass the rules of the previous test okay. There are more positive results than negative results, so that's good but it does still illustrate a characteristic that we need to be aware of. And that's erratic results. Clearly here, these are far less meaningful, which is an immediate concern. This kind of profile is indicative of one of two things. The first is overfitting. It's highly likely that certain parameter values here have been overfitted to price action, either positively or negatively. Secondly, these kinds of erratic results are also often seen when the sample size or number of trades in the optimization is low. And as we've seen in previous episodes, these two issues are actually related anyway. So if I obtained an optimization profile like this, there's no way I would ever trade it in its current form. A slight change in parameters that suddenly leads to a losing system is a huge warning sign. Now the trading strategy itself might actually turn out to be okay because as we said, the profile does have a net positive performance overall. It might just be the case that we haven't used best practice in the optimization process. So don't throw away the system just yet. Instead, go back to the drawing board and sort the sample size issues out using the techniques that I've talked about in my previous episodes in the series. The next warning flag is for outliers with excessive performance. What you'll find is that this often occurs when the sample sizes for the parameter values at either edge of the profile are small. And it's often the case that these edge parameter values produce fewer trades. When this happens, it's much easier to get extreme levels of performance, both positive and negative, for these specific parameter values. When this is the case, you must make sure you ignore these results, no matter how good they appear to be. So you must never choose a value like the one selected here, even though its performance was the best. Instead, choose the value where the nearest neighbours are also good. Now what you can do is automatically exclude these results from the selection by eliminating any results with low sample sizes. And this is one of the things that I showed in episode two of my advanced MQL coding technique series. So check that out if you haven't already. I'll put a link to it in the description below. So up until now, we've only really considered an optimization profile for a single parameter. If we want to look at results from two parameters simultaneously, then we'll need to use a three-dimensional surface. And this is what I'll do in part 8.3. So click on the link here to go there now.